reporting from Red State Watcher, Bill O'Reilly exposes terrorist camps inside the U.S. Uh, this is what the left doesn't want you to know. This is what uh, the Clinton crime syndicate doesn't want you to know, George Soros and all them. This is 100% proof we have terrorist camps spread throughout the U.S. Collapse here. All right. In the impact segment tonight, there's a group called the Clarion Project, which is dedicated to exposing the dangers of Islamic extremists. Recently, we asked Clarion to pinpoint for us five dangerous situations here in the USA. With us, Ryan Morrow. National Security Analyst for the Clarion Project. So you have many, many more than this, but we uh, picked the top five that I think will be of interest. The first one is in Hancock, New York, about 145 miles northwest of Manhattan. What's going up in Hancock? There's actually a place there called Islamburg. They have a sign that says, Welcome to Islamburg. It's about a 60, 70 acre large compound. And it's the headquarters for a group called Muslims of the Americas that follows a radical cleric in Pakistan. The videotape uh, that's on the screen is something that was given to me by law enforcement. So showing them engaging in and let me just remind you that the Obama regime has shut down all investigations and made it totally legal for all these terrorist camps to continue guerrilla warfare training at that Islamburg combat. Okay, so Islamburg, upstate New York, they have weapons, it's private property. Right. All right, they're training on the property. Can the authorities do anything about it? Beyond monitoring them, no, because they're not listed as a foreign terrorist organization. Uh -huh. uh, FBI documents that we've obtained do show that they consider them a threat, but because they're not, they don't have that designation, they're able to operate in the U.S. And we have a do dozen. Do you know how many people are up at this compound? And that specific one, no, but the estimates of the number of members that this group has across the country, they say they have 22 of these places across the country, is somewhere around 3,000. Training ground, wow. All right, now we have the Dar el... Hurrah Islamic Center in Falls Church, Virginia. What's going on there? Right, a history of radical leadership over there. Anwar al Awlaki used to be their imam before he went over and he joined Al Qaeda. Mm -hmm. And there was even videotape that was taken of the current imam speaking uh, recently in Virginia where he specifically said that Muslims should be first in line to get the arms for jihad. All right, so at this center in Falls Church, there's an imam there presently. Right. Who wants to get arms for the jihad. He preaches that that is a requirement upon Muslims. Wow. All right. The third one is one I mentioned last. This is going to be a major part of the draining of swamp that Donald Trump's going to do to this nation. Oh, yeah. He's going to take these people out right away. Unleash the power of the FBI, CIA, NSA, all them on them that Obama has withheld. It's going to happen. Last night in Brooklyn, New York, with John Stossel. It's the uh, Masjid at Taqwa Mosque. What's going on here? That's led by Suraj Wahaj, one of the most radical imams in the country, yet he manages to be a rock star speaking at Muslim events across the country yeah, and even college be, campuses. He's going to be in Dallas this weekend in Garland, Texas, for a big conference. And I brought that up to the imam we had on last night, who didn't seem to think this guy was so radical. He didn't address that. He was addressing the issue of whether he's been prosecuted, which is a whole nother thing. If you look at what he's been preaching, it's sheer anti-Americanism, turning America into a caliphate, and his mosque was even suing the NYP because they were conducting surveillance That's on That's right, it. that de Blasio pulled off. So this is a bad hombre, as I said to Sasa last night. Then there's another one in New York City. This is in Jamaica, Queens, the Islamic Circle of North... You notice what he just said, Bill O'Reilly? He said uh, that de Blasio pulled off. Yeah. You'll notice that these sodomite global elites like de Blasio uh, definitely protect the, um, the Muslim invasion, the propaganda and all that, the terrorists. It's just like Hillary Clinton and, this, and the crime syndicate she reports. She does, she's a sodomite herself. She's doing the same thing. And so is George Soros. He is a sodomite and also he doing the same thing with his billions.
North America. What's this all about? Uh, this is a major organization with origins in Pakistan with an Islamist group over there. Polls show that only about 2% of Muslim Americans say that this group represents them, but they're one of the most well organized there. One of the leaders was actually indicted on war crimes in Bangladesh, and we have a copy of one of their teaching guides that tells Muslims to engage in deception in order to advance the jihadist cause and to implement Sharia governance. All right, then this comes out of Queens, right? This and that wouldn't be of no surprise since the Quran teaches Muslims over and over and over to be deceptive, to deceive, and that Allah is the greatest deceiver of all. Surah 3, book 3, verse 52. This, out of this mosque. This that's is the, that's the headquarters. That's yes. the headquarters. All right, and finally, and this is the most controversial one, you have CARE, the Council on America Islamic Relations. And they've been on this program. They do a lot of media. And what are you saying, that they're a dangerous group? Yes, uh, they are basically a political influence operation of the Muslim Brotherhood, according to the Justice Department, not according to me. Uh, they specifically listed CARE as an entity of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood, specifically its Palestine committee that was secretly set up to advance the Hamas agenda. And the FBI... Palestine, Muslim Brotherhood, same difference, okay? All the terrorist organizations, there's like a hundred of them across the world. No, it's not just a couple or five or ten. It's about a hundred, okay? And they're all the same. And it's all part of Obama's regime of an Arab spring that he started eight years ago. I wiretapped their leaders in 1993, talking about setting up CARE so they could influence the media in their direction. Well, and that's what they do. They come out and they say, look, we're moderates and uh, we just want to give you our point of view. But you say that they're directly tied into terrorist groups? Into the Muslim Brotherhood, yes. Which is and, a terrorist group. Right, and Hamas is the... The way of life of Islam is to have moderates, pretending moderates, to influence the public wherever they go, every nation, to make them think that they are peaceful. That's what you hear constantly. But what you don't hear and don't see is what this man is showing you, how they are preparing for jihad with all these terrorist camps. Palestinian wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay. Um, now, final question is, this is pretty frightening stuff, but you would assume the FBI knows about all of this, if you know about it, and sure. the Justice Department is surveilling them and have them under control. And in a free and open society, this is the rest of them that we didn't talk about. This is the map that ha all of these have raz radical Muslim mosques or operations in all of those towns. And, and it's amazing. Look at them. Sacramento, outside of L.A., Pittsburgh, Chicago, uh, and on and on. So, my question is, should Americans be concerned or is this under control? It can't be under control just through monitoring them. And again, when it comes back to the issue of the ideology, which President Obama refuses to recognize, yes. that's the problem here. It's not just about the person that's setting off the bomb. It's about the overall ideology that combines mosque and state that justifies jihad anywhere. And we need Muslim leaders to step up and fight against those interpretations. The most positive news I've seen is the poll that showed that these organizations have so little support among Muslim Americans. Right. All right. Very I have a question. Bill, uh, what would happen if the Christians and all their churches went into uh, their own parks or whatever, you know, like they are doing, and had a bunch of, bought a bunch of weapons, didn't let anyone in there, and were marching around and practicing warfare in their camp, in our camps? What would happen to the Christians? Come on, let's wake up. It's right there in your face. Anyway, that's going to be all for this report from Bill O'Reilly. I thank you for uh, bringing this man on your show, but at the same time, you seem to be in the fog. Thank you for listening and God bless.